Thank you to Dean Hale, UC Santa Barbara faculty and administration, and to the entire staff working to make this event happen. And to the graduates of 2024, congratulations. Would you all please take a minute, actually graduates, for just a moment, may we all stand up, and show gratitude for the family members, friends, and all the other people here today or not who have helped you get here to this moment. Let's give it up for our supporters and our community. And a very happy Father's Day to all of the proud dads. All right, graduates, please be seated. One of my biggest supporters, happy Father's Day, honey, and former gaucho baseball player is my husband, Chris. This was his pep talk to me. Babe, you're going to do just great. But unless you are Prince Harry or Oprah Winfrey, just as you remember, no one's going to be paying much attention anyway. <laughs> I guess we'll see. 30 years ago, I was just where you are now. I was in a cap and gown, my long curly hair down, wearing sunglasses and decorated in a purple lei with a big smile on my face, seated right here at this lagoon with the scent of eucalyptus in the air. Although you've all made your own memories in this beautiful place, I'd bet that late morning bagel cafe and late night burritos, unorthodox bike rides, and magnificent sunsets, and lots of partying on Del Playa still play a role. You'll have memories of these precious years in Isla Vista all of your life, trust me. Today though, I want to talk to you about what happens next. The day after the euphoria of graduation, when your new reality sets in. I'll talk about my own path from Isla Vista to the Los Angeles Rams, but I'll mostly use that as an illustration of three insights I want to leave you all with. Number one, there is no script. <laughs> Number two, everything can change in a moment. Number three, it's up to you what doesn't change. I've developed some core values and mantras over my years helping Google, Twitter, the Wall Street Journal, and other companies tell their stories. Through these experiences, I've learned that trust is one of the most powerful business values there is. And the way I've been able to build it is to lead with the personal. And I do mean lead in both senses of the word. From what I've seen, most positive business outcomes start from a place of personal connection and respect. But I also think whether you're a woman in professional sports or a recent grad trying to make an impact, need to show people who we are if we want them to follow us. So let me take my own advice. Here's my broad stroke capsule professional history. The day after graduation, I moved to Santa Monica into an apartment with two other gaucho friends. This was the year of the Northridge earthquake, deadly mudslides, and O.J. Simpson's Ford Bronco pursuit. My first two jobs were at ad agencies helping place effective ads. I quickly realized my own passion of wanting to sell ads versus buy ads and moved to the other side of the table, selling ad space for a print publication. Yes, print, that physical thing you open it up, you read, and you turn pages. 
Having seen both sides of the print advertising equation, I ended up at the Wall Street Journal's then brand new digital advertising division. From there, I worked all angles of digital marketing, advertising, content, media, and business development at a few startups and private and public companies. After spending time at Google and YouTube twice and Twitter, I then took the next logical step. I joined the NFL. Okay, for those of you who did think the NFL was a short hop from Twitter, you'd be an outlier. The text I got when it was announced I'd become the chief commercial officer of the LA Rams were over the top, which excited me. One person sent exclamation marks plus some exploding head emojis. One former high-ranking executive at Twitter said, wow, 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 wow. I love this move for you. This is a home run. You are the king of LA now. Him calling me a home run king illustrates just how foreign the world of football and women in sports was to some of my former tech colleagues. I share these details in part so you know who's up here talking to you today, but in part to emphasize the fact that there is no script. Not having a clear path laid out can be enormously intimidating. I know. And for me, ending up in male-dominated industries, both in tech and sports, has had a tremendous impact on my ambition and my drive. But most importantly, I have seen and felt my impact on young, impressionable women earlier in their careers. It is, of course, possible to break through, to stand out, to be chosen, and to break barriers. The opportunities ahead are endless and without a script. I had to look up some of the job market stats in preparation for this talk, but I bet you have a good grip on them already. The vast majority of recent college grads do some form of gig work, and almost a third of them reported gig work as their main source of income. AI has also introduced an immense amount of opportunity, yet uncertainty, into most every industry. Still, in the category of world-changing plot twists, I'm not sure much can beat the invention of the internet, which happened the year I graduated in 1994, when I was entering into media and advertising. What I'm trying to convey here is not only that there was a time before the internet, but to remind you that there have always been moments where we need to figure out how to lean into huge, powerful technology and innovation. There was no script then for what the internet should do or become, but now it touches almost every person every day across the globe. That would be today's AI. And while there is no script, I can say from experience that there is change. But your class doesn't need any reminder of that. I am keenly aware that your high school graduation was at the height of the pandemic. And this is likely the first meaningful graduation you've had in person in years. Your beginning here at UCSB was atypical too, yet thankfully, your ending isn't. I celebrate you now and feel honored to be sharing this momentous and much-deserved day with all of you. For me, change has been tied to industry trends as well as my own professional moves. I've worked in companies that have been bought, folded, or IPO'd. I even worked at a place at age 26 where I was the one doing the firing. And while sometimes you could see what was, a happen what was to happen next, 
it wasn't always clear. What did become clear was that change was inevitable. And while it isn't always comfortable, it is always, always, always also opportunity. It's an opportunity to lean on your existing network, to make new connections, to explore areas you don't know about, and to get both tougher and more joyful. Change within a company or an industry should be viewed as a gift. It's also an opportunity for you to think through what about you will stay the same. For me, some things are intrinsic. I'm that sorority social chair, dancer at UCSB versus UNLV basketball game halftime, can't quite recall much of my classwork extrovert, who cherishes the power of human connection, trust, and relationships, and is always looking forward to what's next, back then and still now. But I have plenty of colleagues and friends who are the opposite and are introverts and who would rather do just about anything besides dance in front of the whole school. And those people are immensely capable and shouldn't be overlooked just because they aren't the loudest ones in the room. So whatever your core values are, learn to trust them. Be funny, be irreverent, be thoughtful, be warm, be cool, be ironic, be daring, be reliable, and be creative. But whatever it is, embrace it. Be you, lead with the personal. Okay, so now you've been warned, there is no script, and change is inevitable. And I've made the case that the best way to navigate scriptless change is to lead with the personal. And even though I may not be Prince Harry or Oprah Winfrey, it's time to prove my husband wrong because it's concrete advice time. No matter where you end up in the coming years, these tips and tricks will help you. First, that old saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know, is true. But not in the negative way that it might sound. Who you know is not the notable people who you recognize or wish you knew. It's who you go out there and meet in person, at industry events, with your whole self leading with the personal. The energy you put out is the energy you get back. Networking is building connections and being yourself. Second. Networking has a few unspoken rules of thumb. Make or take the phone call, try to always be in person, ditch the deck and tell your story. Third, networking isn't a one-way street. For example, there are UCSB alums in all industries and we're more than willing to meet with you and help you find a foothold. I personally always look out for gauchos on incoming resumes. It's part of the deal to pay it forward. I call it a virtuous cycle. It's what good people do. It's what gauchos do. So when it's time for you all to pay it forward, do we have a deal? This year, my husband and I were fortunate enough to create the UCSB Prince Family Scholarship for the Communication Department to show just how serious we are about paying it forward as UCSB alumni. We love this campus and community so much that in recent years in the summers, we've brought our three teenage daughters, who are also here today, to stay on campus with us, right there, at a family sleepaway camp called Family Vacation Center. Go check it out. We can't get enough of this campus and community even 30 years later. And now our daughters get to experience it with us too. We consider it a huge honor to be connected in this way to our precious memories, 
while supporting our fellow gauchos. In fact, my hopes for you all are the same as for my own three daughters. And I hope you're still listening. I hope you all find joy and success being yourselves and then later help others find joy and success too. So if you remember nothing else from me, please remember the feeling and the power of being here together right now in person and connecting with this community. There's no better way and really no other way to feel the power of human connection than in an environment like this all together. You will hold on to these memories forever. So speaking of human connection and before I go, may I please ask to take a quick selfie with you all, you in? I promise I'll post this to social and especially LinkedIn, which is where I might end up seeing a bunch of you next anyway. All right, hold on. Thank you. Hey, Chris, they did pay attention. Go Gauchos.